members, we now rise back from recess. Um, yesterday, uh, prior to going on recess, we had excused uh, the Secretary of Finance, Mr. David Atalik, as he is uh, awaiting a confirmation from his council. And we invited him to come back today at 3.30 uh, to appear before the committee. Uh, Mr. Atalik is here in the chamber. And so at this time, I would like to uh, invite you up to the chamber, Mr. Atalik. And just to remind you, Secretary, you are still under oath. And so, I guess just to start off, um, again, uh, you had requested for an extension as you sought counsel. And so, uh, I will hand the floor over to you to determine whether that has been uh, done and what the status is. Thank you, Chairman uh, Magalonia. And, uh, members of this joint committee. Um, again, I come to you and thank you for granting my request to reschedule my hearing uh, to secure legal representation to be present with me to testify before your joint committees. As I stated yesterday, the Attorney General's uh, Office Attorney and AG recently stopped representing uh, me and has allowed me to seek a private attorney I am in discussions with a couple private attorneys and actively trying to retain one. But due largely to the holidays and the timing, I'm having a hard time doing so. And keep in mind, I was just informed Monday afternoon about the AG's uh, position. Uh, I truly would love and like to fully cooperate with this joint committee. All the attorneys that I've reached out to have advised me not to testify until I secure legal representation. Accordingly, I must wait until I have the benefit of having legal counsel as approved and blessed by the Attorney General. With this, Chairman, Chair, uh, Co-Chair, I continually seek this joint committee to avail me of my rights to legal representation and reschedule my testimony before this uh, joint committee. Thank you. Um, thank you, Secretary Atalik. Uh, with that, at this time, we'll take a two minute recess. We now rise back from recess. Uh, Secretary Athlick, while it was our hope that we hear from you and get some answers as to the boost program, we do recognize your, the, your right to have counsel present. And because of the short amount of time you were given to seek counsel after being authorized to do so, you were unsuccessful in those attempts. So due to the extraordinary circumstance we are in, your request for additional time is hereby granted. But please be reminded that you are still under subpoena and the committee further reserved the right to call you in at a future time. And so with that, uh, you are hereby excused for today. Thank you, Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. And happy holidays to you and your family.
All right. Uh, with that, members, uh, I would like to open the floor to any member who wishes to make any statement or comments. Yes. Nobody? Yeah. Uh, recognize Rep. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, I do recognize uh, Mr. Atzelig's right to counsel, uh, and he remains under under oath, correct? And he remains under subpoena. Um, and I, I would like, though, that we get some kind of definitive answer. Um, for, for when he should be able to find counsel to answer the questions of, of this joint committee. Uh, I, I would also like to uh, find out what is the status of the documents that we commanded him to turn over to the committee <coughs> pursuant to the subpoena duces tecum. I think that is still unresolved um, and the, the Department of Finance should still uh, be required to comply. Thank you, Rep. Samlan. Um, we will have council draft the uh, re additional requests as well as to determine when that date will be um, while Mr. While the secretary um, finalizes some kind of agreement with his council. And then we'll, sh we'll notify the members of when that date will be and we'll, we'll decide from then. Uh, any other members? I recognize Rep. Joel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just curious because uh, I recall the Secretary of Finance uh, stating that he's going to be off island for quite some time, and we are approaching sign and die. So I'm wondering how how are we going to proceed with this? Well, we we do we still have other um, witnesses that are that will be coming in, and we understand that they're you know. The, our term is coming to an end. However, um, you know, these are all informations that the committee will prepare and submit to the, the, the body in the event that we run out of time and the, the next legislature will like to take this matter up. Um, uh, as you've heard, the program runs through um, the 20, uh, 2024. And so, you know, we can still call in the Bank of Saipan, figure out um, how their their follow-up process has been and, you know, any updates as to the program, as well as any, any um, report that the transition team, uh, the transition committee may be a part of in, uh, in, you know, understanding more about this program under the governor's office, uh, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see what report comes out of that committee as well. Thank you. Any other members? I recognize Rep. Probes. I just have a question for the for our constituents. Um, will we be releasing the uh, the names of the uh, list of uh, for the for the boost grants, those who received it, the 250 companies. We've had a lot of our constituents asking each and every one of us and told them we're under a gag order. So I'd like to know from our chairs if, uh, first of all, um, if this can be released and when it can be released to the public so that they can see who received and how much they received. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Rep. Pros. We have every intention of releasing the list. We are, you know, the, the thing that we're faced with is the, the, you know, as we've heard from President Arroyo, that awards are still being given out. Um, I believe we just got the updated list as well as the expenditure report, and um, the chairs are reviewing that list, but um, I will... Uh, I'll defer to co-chair regarding that issue. Um, as we mentioned in the email to everybody, uh, the list could be considered evidence, and that's why the gag order was placed over it. Um, but we will, and we had every intention of publishing that list. And it was, the gag order was issued to avoid any misinformation 
And additionally, we haven't vetted all the witnesses yet. They haven't come in here. And that's just to avoid any misinformation, any rumors going out there, but we will be publishing the list. Rep thank Probst, you, thank you. Said. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Rep Probst. Any other member? Recognize culture. Thank you, Chairman Donald Mugonia. We have patiently provided Mr. Atalig more accommodation than any other witnesses. We have issued subpoenas to or summoned before this body, and we have granted him every extension reasonably possible. Initially, the Office of the Attorney General agreed to represent him. However, the Attorney General's office has informed this committee and has informed their former client, Mr. David Atalik, that he is now authorized to seek outside counsel, just like Mr. William Castro. Mr. Atalik has advised the joint committee that he will be off island next week and will not be returning until after the new year. And I hope that he's not using this time to avoid this body or to let the clock run out. But I want to assure everybody, the members of the both committees and the, the viewing public and our constituents that all hope is not lost. We have not run out of options. We still have witnesses to call in. We will make sure that Mr. Atalik answers as to his involvement with the BOOST program, whether it is when he returns from his off-island trip or when the next legislature convenes. He may have dodged today's hearing, but he cannot elude this problem forever. It is my recommendation and suggestion to all witnesses who have not appeared before this body yet that it is in your best interest to come when we summon you, when we tell you and we give you your schedule to appear. We have other witnesses lined up and we have informed the next witness, actually two of them, of their scheduled to appearance tomorrow at 10 a.m. We have already made contact with Mr. Edward DeLeon Guerrero, Secretary of Commerce, and Mr. Jesus Taisugi, that they are to appear tomorrow at 10 a.m. They have advised me that they are seeking counsel from the attorney uh, legal representation from the Attorney General's office, and they will let me know by close of business today whether the Attorney General's office will represent them or not. But I did advise them that they still need to come in here uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. if they do or if they don't have representation from the Attorney General's office to put it on the record that they either have or have not um, legal representation. If they do appear here tomorrow with their attorney, we will proceed. Um, Mr. Edward DeLeon Guerrero is scheduled first, and then Mr. Jesus Taisugui. And then, also in the interest of transparency and being fair to everyone, we will submit the list of approved uh, boost awardees today for for the record of this hearing, thereby making it a public record. Cam, would you mind pulling up the, I emailed you. Tinian first. We yeah. will not be going over this uh, list one by one. It's just to, Put it out that this is this is now public record, and you can scroll through uh, through the document. And Cam, can you just state for the record the exhibit numbers for these three lists? These lists are listed as thirty six, thirty seven, and thirty eight. If I'm not mistaken, thank 36, you. Thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight. Noted, thanks. Okay, so the first list is from Tinian. 
the awardees from Tinian under the different programs, not a animal, small businesses, and nonprofits. And this is exhibit number 36. And we will um, verify, that, verify that after the today's hearing. Go ahead and scroll down. And this is a two-page document. Again, this is from Tinian. So as you can see, hold up a minute. The total request from Tinian it amounts to $6,419,236.43. The actual award is $1,730,000 for Tinian awardees alone. Next list, Rhoda. Is that Rhoda? Yes. This is a list from Rhoda awardees. This is also a two-page document that we are publishing now. Total request from applicants in Rhoda amount to $4,000,000. $754,923.52. The total award given to Rhoda companies, businesses, nonprofits, amount to $1,160,000. Next list. Last list will be from the, the awardees from Saipan. Here is the exhibit number 38. The awards started coming out on October 5th, 2022. And based on the testimony, of Mr. John Arroyo, the last set of awards that were issued was um, December 16th. This list does not include that. Go ahead and go down. The lists also contain the percentages of what the companies or nonprofits, the, the ratio of what they are awarded. So if they requested 20,000, they were only given 5,000. That would only be 25% of their requests. And the total amount requested from Saipan is $47,219,949.51. The total award is ten million five hundred and fifty thousand for Saipan alone. These lists are now public record. I yield, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Co-Chair. Um, that would any members like to make any comments? I recognize Rep. Samlon. Uh, just I guess a question. Or a request for clarification. Um, the, as I recall, uh, and I don't have the exact uh, document in front of me right now, but as I recall, the Bank of Saipan reported receiving over $300 million worth of requests. But, um, but the total that has just been reported in this list that has been published is uh, far less than that, about $57 million. These are... These lists do not include the ones that haven't been awarded. Oh, this is just what has These been These were the ones that were awarded already. Okay. Okay. And to answer your question also, Reptina, we will be publishing the list of those who have requested and have not yet been approved, okay. as well as the list from the fisherman, farmer, rancher program right. or boost. And actually also the workforce development program. As far as I'm, I can recall, there are there's no list yet. Uh, I think Mr. Arroyo actually said there, or maybe it was Mr. Castro. I'll have to look back. But there, there were at least 50 applicants that um, had not been approved as of last week. We have not received that. But we do know that there have been other approvals since Friday. 
Right. So I think getting that updated list from Mr. Arroyo would be. I think what what Mr. Arroyo mentioned was that they would approve a list and then the checks would come out like a week or two weeks later. So it could be that delay. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to state for the record that the lists we have received from Bank of Guam, I'm sorry, Bank of Saipan, Secretary of Finance, Commerce, are not um, necessarily the same lists that we're seeing. Uh, there are some names that are on the Secretary of Finance list that are not in the Bank of Saipan list, as well as the, as the awards. There are discrepancies mm -hmm. among the lists, so we're trying to reconcile that with the respective offices as well. Why these discrepancies, we're seeing this, these discrepancies. Right. But this is only the list of those who have been awarded. Yeah, and um, if I, I could then also request that we get some clarification about what this list actually reports, uh, because if, if we can just scroll up a little bit more in this on this page, uh, it, it looks like, or maybe on the, the page before that, it it looks like uh, there there were more, there was more than just one applicant that received multiple awards. We know from Mr. Royal's testimony that Bank of Saipan received two awards, right? And it's really confusing from what they've given us. If we could just go to the, I guess, the December 5th award to Bank of Saipan, um, it's, I think it's further up, under business. Keep going, Cam. Uh, so there, Bank of Saipan. Uh, so this would have been the December 5th award to Bank of Saipan, and it looks like another 500,000. Um, that, and that, that's the second award. I, look, I think the first award was in October, and this is a December award. Uh, and and, and it, it, it is confusing um, in that case for one applicant that received two awards, right? Did, is, is it the total that, that was received was 500,000? Or was there the 250,000 award in October and then another 500,000 award in December? And then similarly for the nonprofits, if we can scroll down for the nonprofits, we can see um, that there was one Mariana's initiative, second win, and COVID care force that received more than one award and what what exactly was the total um because the numbers don't reconcile as you pointed out chair uh between what we got from finance and we got from bank of saipan so if we could ask our council to clarify with their council uh what that means exactly so that we can understand the report that they've given us um and then on a final note i think we also asked for the dates of the dates that applications were submitted and I don't see that in this list. These are the dates of award, correct? Yes, that is the date of the award. Um, and we are still working on that. This is a list that, the, that Mr. John Arroyo provided to us uh, recently, uh, two days ago. And you are correct. Uh, a lot of these are not um, reconciled uh, with what we know based on the documents we received previously. And our councils are working with that on that right now. Madam Chair, if I may, or Mr. Chairman. Um, um, sorry, is it clarification? Because we have some. One of clarification. Yeah. Sure. Um, the, the list that was provided. This list. Uh, is it just a rundown of like the names of the companies? Because I remember Rep. Probes asking for a list that includes the names of the people that own these companies. Um, we have received a list of. Uh, who these owners are by uh, requesting for the uh, articles of incorporation. However, we also need to reconcile that because everybody, we're asking everybody for lists, revenue and tax, commerce, and the lists are not in sync. Um, I We specifically asked for all documents pertaining to boost applications. I have I have received a list from revenue and tax, let's say, uh, that contain more names than this. So we also need to seek clarification from them. I have received a uh, documents from the Department of Commerce, uh, specifically articles of incorporation. And there are documents they gave me that are not on this list. So we're, it's still a working list, but this is so far 
what we have from the Bank of Saipan. And I will also be publishing the, of course, we need to redact the um, personal information on it, but the articles of incorporation will be made public record as well. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, also, there was another uh, request made by Rep. Probe, so that I too am lo uh, looking forward to seeing. It's the amounts that were given to the contractors and the sub and and their subcontractors. Is that is that a part of the packet package that you received? I know we requested Bank of Saipan to provide an expense report or not a report. Um, what they provided was an Excel sheet, uh, not an Excel. Uh, Word document or a hard document uh, listing their expenses. So we have that. Um, I believe Rep. Sablan still at the floor. I yield, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Rep. Sablan. Any other members? All right, um, and so, you know, with that, colleagues, again, as the co-chair had mentioned, we still have two witnesses that will be appearing before the committee tomorrow at 10 a.m., um, and that's uh, Mr. Jesus Taisui and the Secretary of Commerce, um, and they have been notified, and so we will recess until tomorrow, December 23rd, uh, 10 a.m.